my team grade four, it's your self-proclaimed favorite mathematics teacher, Miss Aaliyah Brewster. And welcome to another edition of Grade 4 Mathematics. But just in case you're not feeling motivated, remember the words of Paul Halmos. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. So what are you waiting for? Grab a pencil and a notebook, get settled, we're about to start. Today's topic is shading and labeling fractions. But before we dive into that, let's discuss what is a fraction. A fraction is a part of a whole thing or a part of a group of things. For example, one eighth of a pizza or one and a half oranges. Why do you need to learn about fractions? Why are fractions important? You see, fractions are important because they're used in everyday life. For example, if a store were to have a discount of one third off of the sale price, how would you know how much money you're saving if you don't know what one third is? Or let's say you'd like to bake a cake, but the recipe requires you to use a half a tablespoon of baking powder. If you don't know what a half of a tablespoon is, you may wind up having the cake being dense and not fluffy. Knowing how to use fractions is an important mathematical and life skill. With that being said, let's move on to discuss the various parts of a fraction. A fraction has two main parts, the numerator, which is the top number, and the denominator, which is the bottom number. And those two numbers are separated by a vinculum line. Now, let's discuss the denominator. The denominator of a fraction tells us how many equal parts the shape is divided into. I repeat, the denominator of a fraction, which is the bottom number, tells us how many equal parts the shape is divided into. While the numerator, which is the top number, tells us how many of these parts to shade. This is extremely important when you're learning about shading and labeling fractions. So keep that in mind. Let's work together. Take your notepad and draw a shape to represent the fraction 2 fifths. Now that you're finished drawing your shape and divided it equally, let's discuss what this means. I'm going to use the shape of a circle. The denominator of five means that we have to divide our shape into five equal parts. So I would have divided my circle into five equal parts. The numerator of two means that we have to shade two parts out of the five parts on the shape. I would have shaded two parts close together. However, it does not matter which two parts of the shape is shaded, it still represents the same thing. To continue, we're going to work some examples together. For these examples, we're going to look at how to shade and label fractions. First example is a circle. The circle is divided into four equal parts and two out of the four equal parts are shaded. How do we label that shape as a fraction? Well, the numerator tells us 
how many parts are shaded, while the denominator would tell us how many parts the shape is divided into. In this case, the, the amount of parts the shape is divided into is four. So four is our denominator, while the numerator, which is the amount of parts that are shaded, would be two. However, there's also another way to write that fraction. If you look at that shape properly, it's not just two out of four parts that are shaded, half of the shape is shaded. Therefore, two fourths can also be represented by a half. Now let's look at the second example. We have a star and the star is divided into five pieces and two of those pieces are shaded. How do we represent that in a fractional form? Well, the fraction would be two-fifths. Moving on to the third example, we have a rectangle that is divided into three pieces, and one of those pieces are shaded. We represent that shape by the fraction one-third, because one part is shaded, and the shape is divided into three equal parts. Now let's do a fourth example. So this example is in the shape of a hectagon. The hectagon is divided into four equal parts and one of those parts are shaded. If you guess the fractional part as a quarter, then you are correct. Now look at the fifth example. Can you guess what the fraction for that shape would be? If you guess two tenths, then you are correct. That shape is divided into 10 equal pieces and two pieces are shaded. Now let's look at our fifth shape. Look at it carefully and then identify a fraction that would correctly represent that shape. Here, the shape is divided into eight equal parts. It's a circle and it's cut into eight equal parts and three out of those parts are shaded. The fraction, therefore, would be 3 eighths. So if you guessed 3 eighths, well done. Now, let's look at our sixth example. This is also a hectagon, and it's divided into two parts. And one of those parts are shaded. How would you represent that shape? Simple, miss. One above two, a half. Well, if you guessed that, then you're definitely correct. To represent that shape, we use the fraction half. Now for our final example, we're using back the star and the star is divided into five equal parts and four out of those five parts are shaded. What fraction would you use to describe that shape? Well, if you guessed four fifths, you are correct. By now, you should be able to label and shade fractions. Now, it's time for us to do problem solving. This scenario says, Sharon bought a bar of chocolate to be shared amongst her three children and herself. She divides the chocolate into four equal pieces. She gives each child a piece of chocolate and saved one in the refrigerator for herself. Draw a shape to portray the scenario and write the correct fraction. So this scenario is quite simple. To represent a bar of chocolate, we drew a rectangle. We divided that rectangle into four equal parts. Why? Because the scenario said that she bought the chocolate to be shared amongst herself and her three children. So that's four persons, right? So we divided our rectangle into four equal parts. And it said from the scenario, we can infer that three parts were given to the children. So we shared three parts. So the fraction that would represent that shape would be three fourths. Because the shape is divided into four equal parts, the denominator would be four. The amount of parts that were shaded is three, so the numerator is three. It's time for you to do some activities on your own. But I won't leave you just like that. I'll do two for you and you'll do the rest. For this activity, you're asked to identify the correct fraction to represent each shape. So I'm going to do number one and number five. Number one, the shape is a circle. That circle is divided into eight equal parts and seven of those eight equal parts are shaded. From that, I know that the fraction has to be seven eighths because seven is the amount of parts that are shaded 
and eight is the total number of parts that a shape is divided into. Good. Number five now, we have a circle and the circle is divided into two equal parts and one part is shaded. Now from that, I know the fraction has to be half. Why? Because the denominator is two because two equal parts, the shape is divided into and the numerator is one because one of those parts are shaded. So that's the correct answer. So you work the rest and I'll be back to discuss. Were you able to get all correct? Let's verify. So for number two, we have a rectangle there. The rectangle is divided into two equal parts and one of those parts are shaded. Therefore, the fraction to represent that shape would be a half. Number three, there is a, a rectangle again, but this rectangle is divided into three equal parts and two of those parts are shaded. Therefore, the correct fraction to represent that shape would be two thirds. Number four, we have a circle. That circle is divided into eight equal parts and six out of those eight parts are shaded. So the fraction to represent that shape would be six eighths. Number six. We have a square, the square is divided into four equal parts and three out of those four equal parts are shaded. Therefore, the fraction to represent that shape would be three fourths. Number seven, there's a rectangle. The rectangle is also divided into four equal parts and two out of those four parts are shaded. Therefore, the fraction to represent that shape would be two fourths or a half. 
The last one, we have a triangle and the triangle is divided into three equal parts and two out of those three parts are shaded. The fraction to represent that shape would be two thirds. It's time for us to do one last activity. This is problem solving. The scenario says, a family of four ate pizza for dinner. The pizza was divided into eight equal pieces. Father ate three slices, mother ate one slice because she's watching her figure, while the children ate one slice each. Draw a shape to depict the amount of slices that were eaten and write the respective fraction. Were you able to get it correct? Let's verify. To depict this scenario, I drew a circle because most pizzas are in the shape of a circle. 
I divided the circle into eight equal pieces because that's what the scenario said. Now, I would have sectioned off who ate what slice. So from the scenario, it says that father ate three slices. So on three slices, I wrote the name father. While mother ate one slice, and each of the children eat one slice each. So mother's name is on one slice, and the two children, they ate one slice each, so we have their names there. Now what is left is two slices, and we were asked to draw a shape to depict the amount of pizza that was eaten, so we did that. And then we have to write a fraction to represent the amount of pizza that was consumed. The fraction then would be six eighths. Why six eighths? Because the pizza is divided into eight equal pieces, therefore the denominator is eight, and six is the numerator because that's the amount of slices that were consumed by the family. Okay, boys and girls, that has brought us to the end of another lesson. Thank you for tuning in and remember the words of Paul Halmos. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. This means that even though our study time would have come to an end, this does not mean that you have to stop working. If you wish to be successful at your upcoming exams, you must practice. Thank you once again for tuning in and goodbye.